So, greetings and welcome. It's not sunny, but it's not snowing yet, so <laughs> it's a good day. And welcome to everyone present, to those reading the service, and to those joining online later. May this church be a space where each one of us feels safe and respected a part of God's beautiful and diverse family. As an affirming ministry, this community of faith is publicly committed to inclusion and celebrating diversity, valuing people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, all abilities, ages, origins, political and religious beliefs, and economic circumstances and embracing their engagement in every aspect of the life and work of the ministry. We're glad you're here. May this time be a sacred hour of community with God and one another. In announcements. We pray first for Wesley United Church, Thunder Bay, and Bar River United Church in Echo Bay. There's a really good song about Echo Bay. Refreshment, saying conversation after church, uh, Friday, July the 5th, 10 to 11.30, there's a veggie share on the lawn. July the 10th to the 13th, St. Andrews United Church is inviting folks to a camp. Uh, there's information at the back. And Saturday, July the 13th, is Pride in the Park. Save the date if you can go. July the 14th, there's a movie at 1 o'clock after church. Um, I am endeavoring to get us the best exotic marigold hotel. You will love it. I, it's got Maggie Smith and Judy Dench in it. I mean, it's great. Um, Thursday, July the 18th, Bread and Roses Food Bank is from 10 in the morning until noon, and they're looking for a craft dinner, canned pork and beans. The retreat still has uh, some openings from, it's the August 23rd to 25th. If you want to go, you need to really register pretty fast. And scrap metal donations um, are being asked for. The Catholic Church has a bin for metal scraps to support their charities. And gardeners, if you need earth, <laughs> there is still some available, um, but it's only for a short time because we have to get rid of it. You can't just leave a lump of earth lying there. Also, um, there's a project called Hate Has No Home Here. Um, Sudbury Campaign invites us to show love and acceptance by displaying signs, and they look like this. They're, they're double-sided. And uh, there's a note here about them. St. Peter's United Affirm Team are encouraging all of us to show that Sudbury, Greater Sudbury, is an accepting and welcoming city of diverse peoples. And the last few years have shown a marked increase in both hate speech and hate crime. And this hate has no home here, has been an active campaign in communities across Canada since 2021. It's not a religious campaign, but at least four churches in Sudbury are involved so far. Um, and, um, oops, I'll hold it up again. As you will see on the sign, the symbols are of many faiths. The signs were designed in Sudbury and they're intended to start conversations about how our people how our neighborhoods and streets and towns can be made safer. Displaying them will remind some people that they are safe in this area and will remind all people that there's no tolerance for hate. Bay is a quantity available. If you're interested, they're $10. Um, you can put them, stick them in your lawn like that. If you can't do that because you live in an apartment, you can put it in your window. You don't have to get the little pointy sticky things. We gather for worship online, where indigenous people have lived for thousands of years. The 
church is located on the traditional territories of the Monica, Mithraki, and Awash Bay. We lament the damage that European colonization has had on First Nations, Inuit, and Métis community. And we acknowledge that many indigenous people still today live with in intergenerational trauma, racism, and equality. All who live in this area are parties to the robinson hearing Treaty, which outlines the shared rights and responsibilities connected to the care and use of the land. As a covenant people, we are called to honor promises. As a church, we have been called to a journey of learning, reconciliation, and reparation. As Christ's people, we are called to love our neighbors. May God support and bless our commitment to live out these calls. The light of Christ is around on the sign in the season for us a northern people. The flame of Christ's candle reminds us of the beauty and the pers persistence of the light that permits the day, bathes the land, and brightens our path. Thanks to the Creator for our Father and so frame <coughs> and so for the light of Christ. Call to worship is responsive. Beloved, when hope is high, abundance surrounds us and we bask in the goodness of God's provision, God calls to us. Open your heart, your heart and, your and your hands. hands. When disaster strikes, need overwhelms the senses and we carry the weight and worry of a perilous present and an unknown future, God calls to us. Open your heart and your hands. When we are moved with compassion, our hearts urging us to reach out to support our siblings in Christ, God calls to us. Open your heart and your hands. Children of God, as we gather for worship today, listen. God calls us to open our hearts and our hands to one another in need and in abundance. May our worship open our hearts and our hands to one another as we serve to share with one another in all seasons. For we are all one God, the body of Christ. Loving God, we are yours. We come as we are with our cares and concerns. We long to touch you and find healing in your embrace. Strengthen our faith and heal our brokenness that we may worship you with joy. Amen. And our opening hymn, if you like the book, is More Voices 14. It's when two or three. Yeah. 
Gracious God, we gather before you to open our hearts. We struggle to be honest. We know the brokenness within us. Yet we are fearful of being open. We worry that people will think less of us. Loving God, we ask, listen to us, believe with us, even as you know we walk in our own. We shall be set free from a past we cannot change and opened up to a future in which we can be the change. God will grant us the grace to grow, the courage to act, the wisdom to speak, and the daily opportunities to live an honest life and together. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are healed, restored, and forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Is, is called A Helping Hand, and it's a story written by a lady named Deanna Landers. And she writes, I saw nothing and leaned down to see if I could pick it up. I waited to see if it would try to get away, but it didn't. Instead, it became very still as I slid my hand under its little body and lifted it to my chest. I checked to see if it had broken a leg or a wing, but it hadn't. It looked like the little bird had been attacked. I held it close to my heart for a while and remembered the scripture I learned as a child. Not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. I knew if I put it back on the pavement or in the grass, something would come along and eat it. So I decided to place it in a pot of beautiful flowers sitting next to the door. It didn't look like it would survive, so I wanted the little bird to rest in a beautiful, quiet place. When I came home that evening, the little sparrow had died. So many times we feel the unconditional love of God through other people who pass through our lives. So when I loved the little bird that day, I knew I loved it for God, its creator. Often, at the most painful and frightening times, God sends someone to pick us up, comfort us, stand beside us, or lead us. That's what I believe God meant when God said, not even a sparrow would fall, and that God would, and if it did, God would not see. I remember this story today because I heard something in my chimney fluttering frantically. I called my husband and we opened the door to the fireplace to see what it could be, and we couldn't see anything. Sometimes birds resting or nesting atop the chimney wander inside it, unable to fly back up and escape. He said it was probably a bird <laughs> and would get out through the fireplace entrance or back up the chimney from whence it came. I listened for a while and I asked God to help the bird see its way out. And then I thought about how I could help. I couldn't get into the chimney, I couldn't see it, but suddenly I thought about a flashlight. Maybe I could see it then and I shined the light up the chimney, but I couldn't see the bird. I could hear the chirping. I sat back down in my chair and I waited. Suddenly there was another flutter and then no more. The bird had seen the exit when I flashed the light and found its way down the chimney. I opened the door of the fireplace. 
Sitting there in the ashes was a frightened little black cat, Chickie, hoping and waiting to be set free. When we are lost or in a dark place, it's good to have someone shine a light and show us the way to safety. It only takes a tiny bit of light to make a difference in our homes and the world in which we live. But first, we have to be willing. We can do that with a word, a touch, a listening ear, or a helping hand. Um, Deanna Lee Landers uh, writes of herself. She's author of morningcoffeebeans.com. And she says, I have many roles in life. Pastor's wife, mom, nana, nurse, health educator, writer, Christian speaker. I can't remember a time when I wasn't writing stories, either in my head or in my journal. I wonder how many of us have had that experience of finding a little bird that needed help. Me too. <laughs> Pretty much all of us. Then, yeah, and I bet we all helped. We're not supposed to. Say. So together, uh, we'll do the Lord's Prayer. So we can pretend that we're back in our circle, holding hands. Our Creator, who are, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and the glory of the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. So we're going to sing, What Can I Do? And we all know this. Gifts teach children about their rights 
give them an opportunity to express themselves and promote peacemaking as well as gender justice. Providing workshops for children that teach them about their rights empowers them to think critically about themselves and their country. Through media, art, music, and theater, they learn about important social issues, human rights, and gender equality, says the Latin American Center for Popular Communication, which is C-E-P-A-L-C. Children are the most vulnerable group in Colombia. 84% of violent acts in Colombia are committed against children. Two and a half million children living there work to sustain their families. Many are forced into dangerous labor, and that's why CEPALC designs programs in sectors hardest hit by poverty and violence. I told my mom that we had seen some works of Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, and Flora Tristan. I remember that they taught us that we must defend the rights of women. What I like, in general, is that they taught us that we must make peace, says Amelie, an eight-year-old girl who lives in Bogota and is a workshop participant. Thanks to CEPALC -E -E workshops, I'll be a writer, and I will write things so that children will promote and defend peace. Following Jesus' examples, I will defend and promote our rights in my stories so that nobody can disrespect us or the rights we have, Emily says. When I'm an adult, I won't be doing violence against anybody. As we have been loved, so may we love others. As we have been fed, so may we feed others. As we have received from God's hand blessing beyond measure, may we also generously share with one another and with God's world. Let us present our offerings. So together, let us pray. Holy One, we give thanks for all the blessings that have come our way. We give thanks for the blessings poured out and for the love that we have received. May these gifts be a blessing for many and a love offering for all. Our next hymn is Jesus' Hands Are Kind. Thank you. 
Good morning, Trinity United in Cape Breton. My name is Roger West. I am a licensed LLWL within the Canadian Shield region, and my home congregation is St. Andrews United Blind River. It is my pleasure to have composed our service this morning and to preach my sermon, which is entitled Divine Touch, Yours, Mine, and Ours. I'm usually the one that drives when my wife Elaine and I go somewhere. In the course of daily life, we chat and comment on what we see as we drive. Often on longer drives, when the tide of chatter and observation runs its course, we find ourselves driving in a comfortable silence. And that is when I will often reach over and touch Elaine's hand, and she responds by touching mine. On the one hand, it just feels good and I like it. On the other hand, it's about so much more. I want to touch and be touched. I want to feel as though I have been recognized. 
I want to be reminded that I am real and that I matter. I want to feel connected to someone and something beyond myself. I think all of us in some way want to be touched. You see, it's about so much more than physical touch. It's about the touch that makes us well. Years ago, I heard a lecture from a physician who described his ritual of touching patients during his examination, pulling down the eyelids, looking at the tongue, percussing the chest, feeling the abdomen, listening to the heart. He would do this every time he saw his patient. He described a particular patient who was on his deathbed. There was nothing more to be done. An examination was not medically necessary. He went to see this patient on what would be his last day on earth. When the patient saw his doctor, he began to unbutton his pajamas, wanting to be seen, touched, acknowledged, wanting to be reminded that he was real and that he mattered, wanting to be made well, even though he could not be cured. That's the power of touch. Touch has the power to make us well. It was what Jarius and the hemorrhaging woman in today's gospel knew. Jarius wants Jesus to come and lay hands on his daughter, to touch her, so that she may be made well and live. The hemorrhaging woman touched Jesus' clothes, saying to herself, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. And it's not just those two. The Gospels are full of stories about Jesus touching others and being touched by others. Jesus touches diseased skin of lepers, blind eyes, deaf ears, and mute tongues. His touch makes a difference. Skin is cleansed. Eyes see. Ears hear. Tongues speak. He touches the hand of Peter's mother-in-law, and immediately her fever leaves. In Mark 6, verse 56, we hear, Whenever he went into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. During a funeral procession, he touched the bier that carried the corpse, and the dead man sat up and began to speak, Luke 7, 14 and 15. Now, it would be easy to hear these stories as some kind of magical miracles that happen in Scripture, but never in our lives. And it would be even easier to believe that it's only Jesus who has the divine touch. But here's what I wonder. What if those stories about divine touch, that touch that makes well, are happening all the time today? What if that divine touch is not unique or exclusive to Jesus? What if you and I are also carriers of the divine touch? What if that divine touch is a means of healing for ourselves and others? What if we are open, what if we are to open ourselves to being made well by the divine touch of others? What if we are to touch others and the world in ways that affirm, give life, and make well? We all remember our COVID experiences. Do you remember how awkward it was to be in church and not physically connect with your fellow worshipers? Do you remember how difficult it was to share the peace of Christ? Do you remember how awkward it was for you and I as we left the sanctuary without shaking the minister's hand? Or do we realize how much the minister missed shaking our hand? We all missed the connection, the touch. 
Now, before I go on, I want to address and be clear about something. Much of what we hear about today, when thinking of touch, focuses on violations and violence. There is a divine touch that has the power to affirm and give life, to heal and make well, but there is also a touch that has the power to destroy and take life. It's the touch that violates the body, does violence to the soul, and crushes the human spirit. It is the touch of abuse, neglect, violence, poverty, racism. That is not the divine touch. Do not confuse that with what's happening in today's gospel. Every time Jesus reaches out with his divine touch, regardless of where or how it happens, regardless of who it happens to, the divine touch is about opening hearts. It never closes hearts. It's about enlarging and healing the soul. It never diminishes or injures another. It's about making whole and making well. Now, the divine touch happens in thousands of different ways. It's not just one hand touching another, though it could be. The divine touch happens with expressions, gestures, and smiles. We touch one another with our attitudes. The divine touch happens every time we reach out to another with kindness and compassion. When we offer hospitality and welcome. When we forgive. The divine, the divine touch is felt every time we offer another love, hope, encouragement, affirmation. It is felt when we listen, offer our time, or create space and place for another in our lives. Peter, retired minister, was a friend and an unofficial mentor and a teacher to me as I studied to become an LLWL. I could call on him whether I had a question or something I wanted to discuss with him. Other times I just wanted to hear his voice and feel his presence. I can't count the number of times that I felt the divine touch from him. His touch often healed me and made me well, made me better, even when no physical touch occurred. These kinds of things are happening all the time in a thousand different ways. Every one of you could tell stories about someone who touched your life in a way that made a difference, that healed you opened your eyes to see something new, called you into your better self, gave you courage or confidence, or even told you a truth that you didn't want to hear, but needed to hear. Think about those people you, you've known for years, or maybe you meet them for the first time, and you just want to rub up against them, hoping that whatever it is they've got, you'll get some on you. They carry this presence, this life, this energy, that when you're in touch with it and around it, makes you well. That's the divine touch. And there are people that you have done that for, every single one of you. Someone says to you, do you remember when you said or did? It really touched me. It made a difference and you don't remember what he or she are talking about. You don't remember the date, the time, the place, but you can't deny what's been told to you. This divine touch happens in simple and ordinary ways. It's as simple as rubbing an arm or giving a hug, and as ordinary as a phone call. We might be touched physically, but we can also be touched by a note, a wink, a prayer. We're remembered, recognized, and affirmed. And we're made well. A member of our congregation is named Paul. We have another member of our congregation who is a strong and somewhat imposing woman. She runs, or I guess I should say manages our church kitchen. One of her habits, because she has been in the kitchen, 
is to come into the sanctuary just before her service begins. And as she goes to sit with her husband, she often touches people on their shoulder. It is her way of greeting people. It's a small automatic thing, often almost fleeting. But to, tall, to Paul, it was a touch of acceptance and embrace. It reassured him that he was an integral part of our community of faith, that he was seen, that he was acknowledged, and that he was loved. Recently, as Paul was in hospice on his final journey, Paul mentioned how he so missed the touch, that touch, on a regular basis. That simple touch was certainly a divine touch to Paul. Paul was only with us in our congregation for a brief period. But both he and our congregation were connected by an experience of divine touch, both given and received. What in your life today needs or wants to be made well? What in you needs to be touched? What do you need to get back in touch with? What would it take to allow that touch to happen? Maybe you need to face a fear or regret, guilt, disappointment. Maybe you need to let your guard down. Maybe you have to believe and learn that you really are worthy of being touched, seen, and recognized. And maybe it means admitting that occasionally we're just not well and we need a divine touch. What would it be like for you to go out into the world today looking for the people, relationships, circumstance that are waiting for and needing to be touched with a divine touch? What if you are the one to reach out and help someone else be made well? to offer hope, courage, love, a way forward. When we touch, we make a difference. And when we withdraw from or refuse to touch, we make a difference. The poet David White says, and I quote, that to be untouched is to disappear. When I don't get touched, when I'm not connected, I disappear, I'm lost. And when I refuse to touch another, I impose that lostness and disappearance on them. End quote. What if today you and I were to look for those places that need to be touched and made well in ourselves and in each other? I don't know what that might accomplish, but I know this. In today's gospel, the hemorrhaging woman touches Jesus' cloak. He turns and touches her with his gaze. And then he says, go in peace. Maybe the divine touch, when we receive it or offer it to another, is what allows all of us to go in peace. May it be so. Please join me in prayer as we pray our prayer of the people today. Holy One, we come before you in prayer, lifting to you, lifting to you the joys and concerns, the hopes and dreams of our lives. May we also be open to your voice in our lives, that we may see with new eyes and hear with new ears the direction you will have us go. Bless, we pray, this gathering of your people, that we may grow and flourish in your love and grace for the purpose to which you have called us. Hear our prayers for those who li whose lives have touched us, those who are in pain, those who are ill, those who grieve. May we touch their lives not only through our prayers, 
but through our lives and actions as well. Guide us, bless us, uplift us, and hold us. For we are your children, called to your purpose in the world. Hear our prayers, those spoken and those hidden in our hearts. We pray these things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. So when you get your more voices, it's 209. Don't make a difference.